Hello, my friend. If you want to find out how personality ethics differs from character ethics, how to increase personal effectiveness in business, family, and friendships, how to find a mission, and build happiness on this solid foundation, then you've come to the right place. Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, helps you get your mind set on your end goal before you get started. You can put in serious effort to climb the ladder of success, but it will all be in vain if the ladder is leaning against the wrong wall. The book answers the question, how to use free will to help yourself and not harm others. We all have to subordinate our impulsive reactions, our desires to social values. Highly effective people, according to Stephen Covey, do this better than others. The author gives his own formula for self-improvement. He invites us to take a closer look at ourselves and analyze what we actually consider success. And most importantly, remember that any technique is a wonderful servant, but a terrible master. Stephen Covey is a leadership expert, business consultant, motivational speaker, co-founder of Franklin Covey, and father of nine children. Author of the international bestsellers, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Principle-Centered Leadership, First Things First, and other books. Covey has received the Thomas More College Lifetime Achievement Medal and the Inc. Magazine Entrepreneur of the Year Lifetime Achievement Award. Time Magazine included him in its list of the 25 most influential Americans. In the last 50 years, the literature on achievement has been superficial. It described techniques for creating an image, special quick acting techniques, a kind of social aspirin and band-aid, which were proposed to solve pressing problems. There are fundamental principles for effective living, and true success and happiness can only be achieved by learning to follow these principles. The seven habits of highly effective people include many of the fundamental principles of human effectiveness. These skills are fundamental. They have primary significance. They represent a system of principles on which happiness and success are based. Paradigms and Principles Over the past 50 years, the literature on success has been superficial. It described techniques for creating an image, special quick acting techniques, a kind of social aspirin and band-aid, which were proposed to solve pressing problems. There are fundamental principles for effective living, and true success and happiness can only be achieved by learning to follow these principles. The seven habits of highly effective people include many of the fundamental principles of human effectiveness. These skills are fundamental. They have primary significance. They represent a system of principles on which happiness and success are based. However, before mastering these seven skills, it is necessary to understand what our own paradigms are and how a paradigm shift occurs. The paradigm can be imagined as a map of the area. It is clear that a map of an area is not the area itself. This is exactly what the paradigm is. It is a theory, explanation, or model of something. Our attitudes and behavior stem from such assumptions. The way we perceive certain things becomes the source of how we think and how we act. I remember a mini paradigm shift I experienced one Sunday morning on the New York subway. The passengers sat quietly in their seats, some were reading a newspaper, some were thinking about something of their own, some were resting with their eyes closed. Everything around was quiet and calm. Suddenly, a man with children entered the carriage. The children screamed so loudly and were so outrageous that the atmosphere in the carriage immediately changed. The man sank into the seat next to me and closed his eyes, clearly not paying attention to what was happening around him. The children were screaming, rushing back and forth, throwing things, even grabbing passengers' newspapers. It was outrageous. However, the man sitting next to me did nothing. I felt irritated. 
It was hard to believe that you could be so insensitive as to allow your children to misbehave without reacting to it and pretending as if nothing was happening. It was easy to notice that all the passengers in the carriage were experiencing the same irritation. In a word, in the end, I turned to this man and said, as it seemed to me, unusually calmly and restrainedly. Sir, listen, your children are causing trouble to so many people. Could you please call them to order? The man looked at me as if he had just woken up from a dream and did not understand what was happening, and said quietly, Oh yes, you are right, we probably need to do something. We just came from the hospital where their mother died an hour ago. My thoughts are confused. And they are probably confused too after all this. Oh, oh, oh. A map of an area is not the area itself. Can you imagine how I felt at that moment? My paradigm has shifted. Suddenly, I saw everything in a completely different light. And as a result, I began to think differently, feel differently, and behave differently. The irritation was gone. Now, there was no longer any need to control my attitude towards this person or my behavior. My heart was filled with deep compassion. It becomes obvious that in order to make relatively small changes in life, it is enough to take care of your own attitudes and behavior. If a significant, qualitative change is needed, then we will have to work on our basic paradigms. The seven habits are not a set of individual psychological techniques or formulas. In harmony with the natural laws of development, this methodology offers a consistent and integrated approach to the development of personal and interpersonal effectiveness. The way we perceive certain things becomes the source of how we think and how we act. The seven habits are efficiency skills. Efficiency is about balance. In what I call the RRS balance, where R is the desired result and RM are the resources and means that allow this result to be obtained. Skill 1. Be proactive. Each of our terrain maps is based on the stimulus response theory, which is most often associated with Pavlov's experiments on dogs. The basic idea is that we are programmed to react in a certain way to a particular stimulus. However, a fundamental principle of human nature states, between stimulus and reaction, a person remains free to choose. In turn, four directions follow from freedom of choice and they sound like this. Self-awareness, imagination, conscience, independent will. In order to make relatively small changes in life, it is enough to take care of your own attitudes and behavior. The first and most important skill of a person who is highly effective in any situation is the skill of proactivity. It means more than just activity. It means that we are responsible for our own lives. Our behavior depends on our decisions, not on our environment. The ability to subordinate impulsive reactions to your values is the essence of a proactive personality. Reactive people are driven by feelings, circumstances, conditions, and their environment. Proactive people are driven by values carefully selected and accepted. Proactive people are also influenced by external factors, physical, social, or psychological. But their response to this stimulus, conscious or not, is a choice based on values. Our behavior depends on our decisions, not on our environment. Another great way to determine how proactive we are is to look at where we spend most of our time and energy. Each of us is concerned or concerned about a wide range of issues and phenomena. Health, children, work problems, the problem of national debt, the threat of nuclear war. We can separate all these things from those that do not have much emotional or intellectual impact on us, placing them in the circle of concerns. If we take a closer look at our circle of concerns, we will see that some of the things within it are beyond our control, while others are subject to our influence. 
we can consolidate this last group of concerns by placing them within a smaller circle of influence. The ability to subordinate impulsive reactions is the essence of a proactive personality to its values. Proactive people focus their efforts on their circle of influence. They direct their energy to what is under their influence. The nature of their energy is positive. It expands and increases the circle of influence reactive people, on the contrary, waste their efforts in a circle of worries. They focus on other people's weaknesses, environmental problems and circumstances beyond their control. Problems under our direct control can be solved by improving our skills. It is obvious that they are in our circle of influence. These are personal victories. To solve problems that are under our indirect control, we can resort to changing our methods of influence. These are shared victories. Problems beyond our control require us only to calmly accept these problems as they are and learn to live with them, even if we don't like it. It is necessary to separately consider two things from our circle of concerns that deserve serious attention. These are consequences and mistakes. Although we have the freedom to choose our actions, we do not have the freedom to choose the consequences of those actions. Consequences obey natural law. They are in a circle of worries. We can make a decision to stand in the path of a speeding train, but we cannot make a decision about what will happen when it hits us. If the consequence of our choice does not suit us, we call this choice a mistake. A proactive approach to a mistake is to quickly acknowledge it, correct it, and learn the necessary lesson. This approach turns failure into success. Success is the other side of failure. It is not our mistakes others or even our own that bring us the greatest harm, but our reaction to them. Practical Task Success is the other side of failure. Choose a problem that is particularly bothering you in your personal or professional life. Determine which category it falls into problems under your direct control, under indirect control, or out of control. Identify the first step you can take to solve this problem in your circle of influence and take that step. Habit 2. Start with the end goal in mind. To begin with an end in mind, is to begin with a clear understanding of your life's purpose. It is incredibly easy to fall into the trap of activity, into the cycle of activities and events, spending more and more effort on climbing up the ladder of success, only to one day realize that this ladder was leaned against the wrong wall. You can be a very busy person and still not be effective. The principle of begin with the end in mind is based on the idea that everything is created twice the mental or first, creation, and the physical or second, creation are separated. It is not our mistakes others or even our own that bring us the greatest harm, but our reaction to them. To a greater or lesser extent, people use this principle in a variety of life situations. Before you build a house, you create a detailed plan. Before you go on a trip, you determine your destination and the best route. You write the text of your speech before you give it. You draw a pattern for your future dress before you thread the needle. Habit 2 is based on the principles of personal leadership, which means that leadership is the first creation. Leadership is not management. Management is the second creation. Management focuses on the bottom level. How can I do this best? Leadership deals with the top level. What exactly do I want to do? You can quickly realize the important difference between these two concepts if you imagine a group of people making their way through the jungle, cutting their way with machetes. These are the manufacturers. They solve the problem. They are paving the way. Behind them are managers, those who manage the producers. They sharpen machetes, create rules, manuals and instructions, organize programs to restore muscle strength, propose technological innovations, develop production schedules and incentive plans for manufacturers. 
The leader is the one who, having climbed the highest tree, assesses the whole situation as a whole and shouts, this is not the jungle. How do busy producers and managers most often react to this? And here's how, shut up, we are moving forward successfully. Efficiency, and often survival itself, depends not only on how much effort we put in, but also on whether we put it in the right jungle. It is incredibly easy to fall into the trap of activity, into the cycle of activities and events, spending more and more effort on climbing up the ladder of success, only to one day realize that this ladder was leaned against the wrong wall. The most effective way I know to start with an end goal in mind is to develop a personal mission statement. This method focuses on what you want to be character and what you want to do contributions and achievements, as well as the values and principles that underlie your character and your actions. In order to create personal mission statements, we must start from the very center of our circle of influence, where our main paradigms are concentrated those prisms through which we see the world around us. By placing the right principles at the center of our lives, we create a strong foundation for the development of the four life-sustaining factors. A life centered on principles is characterized by wisdom and inner orientation, the source of which is accurate maps, an accurate idea of what is, what was, and what will be. The right maps allow us to clearly imagine where we want to go and how best to get there. Awareness of the meaning of life comes from within. A personal mission is not something you can write in an evening. It requires deepening into oneself, careful analysis, thoughtful expressions, and many revisions in search of the final version. It may take weeks, even months, before you are completely satisfied with the results achieved and feel that you have achieved a comprehensive and concise statement of your deepest values and aspirations. Even then, you will return to what you wrote regularly, making some adjustments as your views and circumstances change over the years. Because skill too is principle-based, it has wide application. Not only individuals, but also families, teams and organizations of all kinds become much more effective if they start with an end in mind. Practical task. Start working on writing your personal mission statement. Think about the big things you have planned for the next few days and apply the principle of mental creation to them. Write down the results you would like to achieve and the steps that will lead to them. Habit three, do what needs to be done first. Efficiency and often survival itself depends not only on how much effort we put in but also on whether we put it in the right jungle. The most important matters should never be subordinated to the least important, Goth. Habit three is a personal achievement, the fruit of the practical implementation of habits one and two. Habit three is the second, physical creation. This is implementation, implementation, a natural consequence of skills one and two. When we talk about skill three, we discuss issues related to life and time management. The best time management idea can be summed up in one phrase. Organize your actions based on priorities. There are four levels of time management. Each level builds on the previous one, giving us more and more opportunities to manage our lives. The first wave, or the first level of time management, is characterized by notes and memos, attempts to somehow organize and systematize everything that requires us to spend time and effort. The second level corresponds to the appearance of calendars and diaries. This reflects an attempt to look forward, plan events and activities for the future. Awareness of the meaning of life comes from within. The third level is a reflection of the current situation in the field of time management. Adding to the legacy of the previous levels is the important idea of setting priorities, clarifying values, and, on this basis, comparing the relative importance of different activities. 
Today, many have moved to the fourth, completely different level. It has now become clear that the term time management is actually a misnomer, since the task is not to manage time, but to manage yourself. The essence of the fourth level of time management. Its original idea is that we spend time in one of four ways. Important and urgent matters, critical situations, urgent problems, projects with deadlines, Important non-urgent matters. Preventive actions to maintain mismaking connections. Search for new opportunities. Planning. Restoration of strength. Non-important urgent matters. Extraneous conversations and phone calls. Some correspondence, some messages, some meetings. Routine affairs. Not important, not urgent things. Little things that take up time, correspondence, phone calls, an idle pastime. The most important matters should never be subordinated to the least important, Goth. Effective people stay away from statements three and four because the matters related to them, even if urgent, are not important. Moreover, effective people reduce the size of formulation one while spending more time in Formulation 2. Everything we do happens through delegation, either to our time or to other people. If we delegate something to our time, we act in the spirit of productivity. If we delegate something to other people, we act in the spirit of efficiency. There are two main types of delegation, execution delegation and management delegation. Delegation of execution means, go here, Go there, do this, do that, and report to me when it's done. Leadership delegation focuses on results rather than methods. The right to choose a method is given to people who are responsible for the results. The best idea in time management can be summed up in one phrase, organize your activities based on priorities. The principles of delegated leadership are true and apply to any person and any situation. Interestingly, each of the seven skills falls under statement two. Each of them contains fundamentally important recommendations that, if followed consistently, will make huge positive changes in our lives. Practical task. Plan your next week using the time management matrix. Identify an activity related to statement one that you have previously neglected that if done well, would have a significant positive impact on your life, both personal and professional. Make a list of tasks that you could delegate. Habit 4. Think win or win. Win-win is a general philosophy of interaction between people. This is the one of the six interaction paradigms. Alternative paradigms. Lose, lose, or win. Lose or lose, win. One, one, win or don't bother. The principles of delegated leadership are true and apply to any person and any situation. Win-win is a special attitude of heart and mind aimed at constantly seeking mutual benefit in all interactions between people. Win-win means that all agreements and decisions are mutually beneficial and satisfying to both parties. When a win or win decision is made, both parties are happy and committed to the plan of action. People with a win or win mindset see life as an arena for cooperation rather than competition. Win-win thinking is an interpersonal leadership skill. It involves the use in our relationships with other people of all the unique properties of a person's self-awareness, imagination, conscience, and independent will. It includes mutual learning, mutual influence, and mutual benefit. The essence of such negotiations is to separate the person from the problem, focus on interests rather than positions, develop mutually beneficial options, and insist on objective criteria, external standards, or principles accepted by both parties. The ability to communicate is the most important skill in a person's life. 1. 
Imagine the problem from the other person's point of view. 2. Identify key issues and concerns not positions relevant to the problem. 3. Determine what results will provide a fully acceptable solution. 4. Identify new possible options for achieving these results. Practical task. Select a specific person with whom you would like to enter into a win or win agreement. Try to put yourself in this person's shoes and describe in detail your idea of how he sees the solution. Then write down the results that would mean a win for you. Ask your partner if he or she is willing to discuss the problem until you come to a mutually beneficial solution. Habit 5. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Before you raise a problem, before you evaluate and advise, before you present your ideas, try to understand. This is a powerful skill for effective interdependence. Let's say you have vision problems and you decide to seek help from an ophthalmologist. Having impatiently listened to your complaints, he takes off his glasses and hands them to you with the words. Here, put it on. I've been wearing these glasses for 10 years now, and they help me a lot. I have spare ones at home. Take these and wear them. You put on glasses, but you see even worse with them. Terrible glasses. You exclaim, I don't see anything in them. Can't be. The ophthalmologist is surprised. They help me great. Try again. Yes, I'm trying. You answer. Everything is blurry. What's wrong with you? Try to be positive. Fine. But I don't see anything positive in them either. Well, my dear, how ungrateful you are. The ophthalmologist is indignant. And this is after everything I did to help you. What are the chances that you will see the same eye doctor the next time you need help again? Synergy is an activity of the highest order, a true test and manifestation of all other skills combined together. The ability to communicate is the most important skill in a person's life. When we are awake, we communicate almost all the time. But here's the paradox. We spend years learning to read and write years learning to speak. What about listening? What training have you taken to learn how to listen? Listening in a way that truly, deeply understands the other person and sees things from their point of view. The principle of seek first to understand is associated with a profound paradigm shift. We usually strive to be understood first. Most people listen not with the intention of understanding, but with the intention of responding. They either speak or are preparing to speak. Empathic listening means much more than registering, reflecting, or even understanding the words being spoken. With empathic listening, you listen with your ears, but also, and this is much more important, you listen with your eyes and heart. You listen not only to the meaning, but also to the feelings. You listen to the person's behavior. Because we listen with our past experiences in mind, with our biography in mind, we typically respond in one of four ways. We evaluate agree or disagree. We inquire, we ask questions based on our value system. We advise, we give recommendations based on our personal experience. Interpret, we try to understand the character of this or that person explain his motives and actions based on our own motives and actions. Before you raise a problem, before you evaluate and advise, before you present your ideas, try to understand. This is a powerful skill for effective interdependence. The essence of synergy is to appreciate the differences between people in mentality, in the emotional sphere and psychological differences. When we truly, deeply understand each other, we open doors to creative solutions and third alternatives. The differences between us cease to be insurmountable obstacles to communication and development. On the contrary, they become steps leading to synergy. 
practical task. Talk about empathy to someone close to you. Tell him or her that you would like to learn how to truly listen to others and ask him or her to evaluate your progress in a week. How well did you do this? What impact did this have on your communication partner? Habit six, achieve synergy. Synergy is an activity of the highest order, a true test and manifestation of all other skills combined together. Relying only on our own experience, we constantly experience a lack of information. The highest manifestations of synergy occur when we face life's most difficult problems and focus on them, the four unique human characteristics, win or win motivation and empathic communication skills. The results of this are akin to a miracle. We are creating new alternatives, something that did not exist before. Synergy is the essence of principle-based leadership. Simply put, it means that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. The key to interpersonal synergy is interpersonal synergy, the synergy within ourselves. The essence of interpersonal synergy is embodied in the principles of the first three skills, which give a person internal security sufficient to open up and not be afraid to become vulnerable. By mastering these principles, we develop a sufficiency, mentality, a win or win mindset, and habit five sincerity. The essence of synergy is to appreciate the differences between people differences in mentality, in the emotional sphere and psychological differences. And the key to appreciating differences lies in recognizing that all people see the world not as it is, but as they themselves are. A truly effective person has enough humility and respect for others to recognize the limitations of his own perceptions and to appreciate the rich opportunities available to him through interaction with the hearts and minds of others. Relying only on our own experience, we constantly lack information. Habit seven is your personal resources and tools. The synergy is powerful. Synergy is a true principle. It is the highest achievement of all previous skills. Synergy is efficiency in an interdependent reality. This is team building, teamwork, developing cohesion and creative interaction with other people. Although you cannot control other people's paradigms or the synergistic process itself, the main factors of synergy lie within your circle of influence. Practical task. Think about who you know usually sees things differently than you do. Try to use these differences as stepping stones to third alternative solutions. Say, you might ask this person for their opinion on a current project or issue appreciating their likely differences from your point of view. Habit seven, sharpen your saw. Habit seven is your personal resources and tools. It supports and develops your most valuable resource yourself. It renews the four dimensions of your nature, physical, spiritual, intellectual, and social emotional. This is the most profitable, largest investment we make in our lives. To do this, you need to be proactive. Spending time sharpening the saw is an action that definitely falls under formulation two and requires initiative on our part. In order to develop our own resources, we must put pressure on ourselves until the activity in formulation one turns into a useful habit a skill. Our internal resources are in the center of our circle of influence and no one but us can ensure their development. This is the most profitable, largest investment we make in our lives. This is an investment in yourself. We are our own instruments, and to be effective, we must recognize the importance of regularly sharpening the saw in all four dimensions. The physical dimension involves taking effective care of your physical condition, eating the right foods, getting enough rest, and exercising regularly. Renewal of the spiritual dimension leads to the achievement of leadership and therefore is most closely related to skill too. The spiritual dimension is your core, 
your center, your commitment to your own value system. Constant ongoing learning that trains our minds and broadens our horizons leads to vital intellectual renewal. Updating the socio-emotional dimension, unlike other dimensions, does not require a special investment of time. We can do it in the course of ordinary, everyday interactions with other people. But this will also require effort. Change real. Real change comes from the inside out. The seven habits of highly effective people create optimal synergy between all four dimensions, and upgrading any one of them enhances your ability to live by at least one of the seven habits. Although these skills are a sequential series, improvement in one synergistically enhances your ability to master the others. The more proactive your skill one, the more effective you can become in personal leadership skill two and personal management skill three. The more effective you are at managing your life skill three, the more renewal actions from formulation two you can take skill seven. The more you seek to understand first skill five, the more effective you will be in finding synergistic win or win solutions skills four and six. The more you improve in any of the skills that lead to independent skills one, two, and three, the more effective you will be in interdependent situations skills four, five, and six. And updating skill seven is the process of updating all skills. Practical task. Make the same list of renewing actions for the physical, spiritual, and measurements. In intelligent dimensions, in the social-emotional area, make a list of people with whom you would like to improve your relationships or identify areas where overall victory could be more effective. Select one item from each area and add it to your list of goals for the next week. Complete what is planned and evaluate the performance. From the inside out. Achieving unity with ourselves, with our loved ones, friends and colleagues is the most precious, most desirable and delightful fruit of the seven habits. Change real. Real change comes from the inside out. They will not happen if you pluck the leaves using techniques from the arsenal of personality ethics aimed at changing attitudes and behavior. Change comes from the roots from your way of thinking, from your fundamental underlying paradigms that define your character and create the lens through which you see the world. Achieving unity with ourselves, with our loved ones, friends and colleagues is the most precious, most desirable and delightful fruit of the seven habits. Obviously, developing a highly integrated character and living a life of love and service that leads to true unity is not easy. This is not a social aspirin or a band-aid, and yet it is possible. It all starts with the desire to make the right principles the basis of our life, to break the paradigms created by other centers, and to break out of the deceptive comfort of habits unworthy of us. By placing the right principles at the center of our lives and maintaining a balance between action that leads to results and the development of our ability to act, we are empowered to create an effective, useful and happy life for ourselves and our descendants. My friend, I'm sure you will succeed. All you have to do is try a little. Bye.